I'm awake, what time is it? Oh my gosh, I'm one minute early. One minute early to being right on time. Good morning, everyone. I have this intuitive gift where every time I set my alarm, I always wake up like two or three minutes before that alarm goes off. I try to be up by seven because it makes me why I'm up by seven to be quite honest with you it just feels like an appropriate time to be awake today I am back at Ryan and Shane's house and that is kind of how my life works at this point I just kind of flip-flop between whatever feels good for me that day I'm actually going to LA at the end of this week because I have to bring all of my stuff here which is really convenient because I don't have a house to put it in, so that'll be a fun journey for us to go on. Anyway, that's not the point of today's video. What I wanted to do today, I came with an agenda of things to talk about that have been, you know, heavier on my mind. Today, it just happens to be Thursday. Thursday is just quite simply my day. Something that is very crucial to my Thursday, this is very strict, this is a routine that I keep. One of my favorite sponsors, who I love and adore so much, Kenzie is going to be sponsoring this vlog. Me, as a person, I don't like to have body hair at all. I am committed. The leg hair, gone. Bikini hair, abolished. Arm hair, vanished. Armpit hair, banned. This is one of my favorite things in the entire world. Okay, here we go. My spicy little minx is ready. Here she is. This is the new Kenzie ice device. There's, sorry, there's self-tanner all over. And this one, like the normal one, comes with a little instruction manual so no one gets harmed in the process of the icing. You can see on here, it is FDA cleared, stamped, and approved. This is the normal one. It is the premium handset, which I've used a million times before. Very easy process. We are going to plug this in to the wall. Thank you, Benjamin Franklin, for the electricity that set all of us girls and gays and nays and straights up to thrive. Push the on button, pretty straightforward. It will turn on for you. You can adjust the intensity. So definitely start with a lower intensity. See how it goes on your skin. I'm up to like three, four intensity now because I trust her. You wanna exfoliate, you wanna get the area clean, you wanna have a clean, smooth surface when you're about to zap, zap, zap. Once you start using a Kenzie device, you can expect results in up to four to five weeks. Reduced hair growth, hair grows back thinner. The rate at which your hair grows back is significantly slower and the hair grows back a little patchier, but that's a good thing because that's how you know that it's working. Now you know the feeling, you go to the gym or you go to a workout class, you go out on the town with your friend, you're having a good time, you look to your right, you look to your left, you see the Amazon rainforest, you know deforestation is bad, but in this case it's not bad. Realizing that I haven't shaved my body hair and other people can see it in a public setting is like an F my life. That's a moment in a night or in a day where I just simply can't recover. And now that I use Kenzie, I feel like it's almost as if I have underarm insurance that when I lift up my arms, there's not much going on down there, so I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to lift up my arms in public anymore. And that is a beautiful thing. They're sleek, they're easy to use, 30 years of flashes, you ain't running out of little zip zaps anytime soon. I'm not even 30 years old yet. I got a whole nother lifetime in this thing. I could have kids, watch them go to school, watch them graduate college, and become doctors before this thing will run out of flashes. Lightning could never. Get a long ass beautiful power cord, which is amazing because I kind of like to lay in bed or like sit in a comfy chair and watch TV while I do this. It's like a leisure activity on a Thursday for me. It makes me feel very like up to times with technology. Like yeah, I have a fancy little technology machine in my room, ready to laser my hair off. What about you? I do have a discount code for you. This is updated from my previous discount code. It is a little different. It is MVLOGS50. Boom. With that code, you will receive $50 off your first device. I love Kenzie. I love you. I love being a hairless little rat because that is like me in my truest form and that's how I want to be and it just makes me happy that like there's brands out there that just help me achieve who I want to be and just make it so easy and I just really appreciate it so M vlogs 50 you can get $50 off your first device on kenzie.com and now we can get into the rest of the video I'm sure that many of you probably could just tell but the beginning of this year was not going well for me I was not well in the head I'm done talking about the breakdown season I'm really sad, but it's okay because I'm watching Pretty Basic. Hi. Oh no, I forgot how to zoom. Oh my god, why am I eight? Hi, Remy. I'm moving on to building back up. It is 6.48 in the morning. I am 12 minutes early today. I 
I'm still half asleep. I'm trying to wake my brain up so I can figure out how to form an English sentence so I don't sound like a blabbering idiot to you. Why I've been waking up so early, I really don't know. This isn't all too purposeful at this point. I feel like it's Jesus himself looking down at me and like, girl, you gotta get it together and you gotta get it together before 7 a.m. Apparently that's the message that I'm receiving, so I'm listening, here I am. I thought we could go through today kind of what a normal-ish day in my life looks like when I'm not working like a crazy person and when I'm not editing like a crazy person. I also thought we could walk through what I eat in a day now that I've decided not to treat my body like absolute shit all of a sudden. Typically for breakfast, most days of my life, I'll have oatmeal with almond butter and banana. And this has been a staple in my life since the dawn of time. I love this and every time I stray away from this shit starts to go wrong. Like this is the secret for me. So when I can get this figured out in the morning, like when I wake up and I decide to think to myself, Morgan, let's think logically here. This is how it goes. I will be honest with you though. I am excruciatingly tired. Uh, don't mind the car. It's really dirty. just drove here i'm about to go in i have to mentally prepare myself for a second and i usually get here early because i leave a little early because i'm always like worried that i'm not gonna be able to find a place to park and then there's always a million places to park and i'm just sitting here early every time something in my life that i just kind of like to suppress and pretend that it never happened and it's not a part of my reality i was in dance for like 14 years. I would rate my experience as a dancer bad, but I was like a legit wannabe ballerina. I had little point shoes, I had little leotards, I had little pink tights. <laughs> I was a dancer. <laughs> but what I took away from my 14 years as a dancer is that I will never be late. I'm going to Soul Cycle right now. I want to just put it out there that Denver Soul Cycle is completely different than LA Soul Cycle. I don't know what it is about LA Soul Cycle, but they want you to cry. Like they want you to hear their little like sappy pep talk. They want to have a whole emotional experience. And sometimes I'm like, I don't need a whole emotional experience at eight in the morning. In Denver, they just kind of let you work out and then go on with your life. It is overpriced. It is kind of out of my way, you know? <laughs> Life is short. And this is the overpriced bullshit that just makes me happy. So I keep coming back. And I don't know why someone named Rico put my email and all these spam things and I get a million emails a day that's like, Amazon, you won a $5 million gift card, Rico. My name is not fucking Rico. I'm dead. Oh, freaking A, that was too much. I cooked them to perfection, and you just kind of break it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfection, perfection. I make two for grandma, she eats two. Sometimes I have one, but today I worked out, so I'm extra, extra hungry. I'm back with Maddie, and I feel like it's a good thing because usually when people go through a crisis, they chop their hair. And instead of doing that, I'm gonna add hair. The last time I got hair extensions, it was really, really bad. There were the tapins and my hair got destroyed. I only have these one little ratchet clip-ins that I got from the hair shop so long ago. And we're ago. not doing those anymore. And I think they're ripping my hair out. And they also are always hanging out and I'm always on the track team out in public, so. <laughs> and it's also summer and I'm also hot. There's gonna be two rows. Whoa. <laughs> The string keeps getting longer. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. It's coming out of my it's head. Out of her head. <laughs> if I was like a girl that drank vodka every day, I feel like I could keep it this long. <laughs> I could create like a whole alter identity with Here. this. <laughs> Two girls going to drink vodka. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are twins. We are twins. <laughs> Cora got the same hair that I did. <laughs> I will put Maddie's information yeah. down below. She's my buddy. I mean this with all sincerity, I don't know exactly who I am right now. And that sounds like a joke, but I'm being 100% serious with you. I feel like in the past three months, everything that I previously knew about myself and all the facts that I thought to be true are now in question. And I feel like I'm now taking a lot of those pieces and kind of editing and revising them. And I'm kind of using this as like a trial and error phase. January through March, the effort was the absolute bare minimum. The bar was set 
underneath the ground. The bar was not on the floor. The bar was underneath the ground. My point is through the notes that I've taken on previous chapters in my life, the kind of building back up phases are always the best phases. So when I woke up today, I was like, I'm kind of in the best phase right now. I don't know who the fuck I am. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I don't know where the fuck I live. I don't know where the fuck I'm going to live. And I am on a NASA level mission. Like I am Elon Musk trying to go to Mars style mission, trying to figure out what exactly works for my body because I am at a point in my life where it's like, I'm 24. I don't want to be wobbling around feeling like shit anymore. I'm done with it. I'm over it. So I have dedicated April and now May to kind of doing a little experimentational phase with my body, my diet, my workout routine, my overall health, well-being, mental, physical, emotional. Where I decided to start with that because once I stopped taking birth control, I was so afraid of getting acne and something that we all know very severely causes acne for a lot of people is dairy. So I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, Morgan, I know that you're a bitch that really loves cheese. I get it. I know this about you. I understand. I think most people would agree. It's time to crack down. It's time to get serious. I was also so afraid of my skin absolutely going insane. Rocky Mountain National Park. I thought it was going to be a war zone. I thought it was going to be pus on the mirror every night. I thought it was going to be my face bloody, just covered in cysts and all this crazy stuff. I had no idea what to expect. So I took precaution to take a little initiative for my own life, have a little self-awareness that I am not happy with who I am in this current moment and I'm gonna try some new things. So ever since the beginning of April-ish, I have cut out dairy products with the exception of eggs because I don't think I could live without eggs. I genuinely love eggs so much and I eat like four a day, which might not be healthy for you, but I just, I, you can't take away everything from yourself and I just, I'm a bitch that loves eggs. I love eggs. I love them. You can't stop me. If you're at a store in Southeast Colorado and there's no eggs, it's probably because I bought them all. I love eggs. I love them. So when I cut out dairy, I was like, okay, I know that it's kind of a battle between a bunch of different communities, whether or not egg is dairy or not. I could live without cheese. I could live without sour cream. I could live without yogurt, but I simply, if I stopped eating eggs, I would fall down and die. And somewhere in there, I just kind of decided that I was gonna stop eating meat as well. I don't know 100% how I feel. I'm still kind of in a trial and error zone, but I thought I would give you an example. Let me show you, let me show you. So this is a rice bowl. It has rice, it has broccoli. Shocker to the world, I eat broccoli, bitches. Uh, it has carrots, it has edamame, it has cucumber, it has tofu. And I was always a person under the impression that tofu was just kind of like, worthless sponge but it's actually pretty good and i'm actually kind of into it so this is something that i've been eating and it comes with a little sauce i'm it up something else that i would like to add if i'm just being open and honest with my people is that i am at a point in my life right now where i am like actively trying and making an effort to lose weight and I know that a lot of people get mad when you say that, which I've always found really funny. I see this as if I'm talking to a friend, which from an outside perspective to some people who just don't simply get it, think that it's probably unhealthy, but I, I get it. I know you get it and I also get it. And I don't think that me saying that I am in a place where I'm trying to lose weight will offend most of you watching. I could use a little more health in my life. I have been going to the same therapist for two years now. That's not always something that I like to talk about because I, not that I'm ashamed of it or embarrassed of it or don't want to share, but that just always has felt like something that is for me. But you know, we're in an experimental phase, so I'll throw that out of the window. Now I'm sharing it with you. But one of the major things that I talk about with my said psychiatrist is diet, relationship with your body, relationship with how you look, body dysmorphia, eating habits, things like that. I'll tell you an area of my life that is not thriving that we're gonna work on today. When you see my car and you see the state of my room, <laughs> you're gonna question who I am as a person. There are people that have a messy room or there are people who have a messy car. I'm here to represent those of us who have both. What the hell? Why did the rise stop? When are you leaving? Friday. Friday. Wanna see my room before? Well, I thought you just cleaned it though. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How does it get this way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Look at this. 
There isn't really a point of view where it gets any better. At least I can say I was hard at work. A good place to start always feels like laundry because then you can kind of time yourself out. However, every time I go to do laundry, I feel like I'm attached to the thing that I'm wearing. Like I've been wearing this hoodie for three days now. And once I take it off to put it in the washer, I'm gonna have to find something else to put on my body. And although I have enough clothes for a family of 20, I just don't know what I'm gonna wear. This is gonna be like a full wash showdown. I have to wash my towels. I have to wash my whites. I have to wash my colors. I have to wash my darks. I have to wash my sheets. And I have to find something else to wear. Ugh. I just got this fancy little robe from Skims and I know that should be the last thing on my priority list right now. Did I tell you that I fired all my contractors? I fired all my contractors, but also I have to leave for three weeks because I, I never mentioned this to you, but I still have all of my stuff in LA and two of my friends moved into my house in LA. They've been living there with my stuff. So it's basically been like a functional live-in storage room. I gotta move my shit out. Isn't it ironic that I um, have two houses and nowhere to live? Yeah, it's, I... I had to take a 30 minute breather and I'm, I've collected myself, I've pulled it together, I'm ready to conversate with you in a normal and calm manner. Putting it out there right now, if you don't like any discussion of medications, if you don't like any discussions of weight loss, weight gain, that's pretty broad, but if any of that thing is not for you, I'm telling you right now, this video is not gonna be for you. I will send you on your merry way and hopefully I'll see you next week. I just don't wanna offend anyone, so I thought I'd give you a little like heads up. To preface my story, just so I can create a clear picture for you, I have been doing YouTube as my full-time job for over four years now, which is literally the most insane thing that has ever come out of my mouth. After four years, people have seen me at all different weights, all different mental states. Dare I say we might as well be married because you've seen me at my best and you've seen me at my worst and you're here still. So that says something. I'm very lucky because 99.9% .9 of the people who come and watch my videos and comment on my videos and send me messages and all those things are so, so, so unbelievably kind. I'm just talking about society as a whole. People are obsessed with other people's weight. You could gain 100 pounds, you could lose 100 pounds, and either way you're gonna piss off one of the sides. There's no winning. I'm gonna tell you about the simple topic that as a creator, and even as a viewer, what has been the most confusing part of the social media society that we are in, and that is like the whole body positivity movement thing. Before you come at me with a steak knife, I just wanna explain my thinking, because I think the whole concept is great. You should absolutely think positively about yourself. You should absolutely think you're beautiful. People of all genders, people of all shapes, of all sizes, of all races, of all locations, of all occupations, like everyone has beauty to them, no matter what. Like point blank simple, that's how that's how I would see it. With that being said, I'm almost 100% positive that the body positivity movement was not created for like the Instagram girls to grow their page and be like, I love myself. It was like a completely different concept. In my experience, when people decide that they're going to directly comment to you about your body, they're gonna say one of three things. One, they're either gonna say, you've gained weight, you're fat now. Two, you've lost weight, something must be wrong. Three, which is just my absolute favorite comment to receive is gosh how are you so confident and then you kind of sit back and you're like wait is there like something like wrong with me that i shouldn't be allowed to be confident like do i look do, like what my stupid analytical brain that's like body positivity emphasis on positivity and when i think of positivity you know i think happy optimistic uplifting, confident. People want you to be like that all the time. But I'm telling you, when I'm in an unhappy place in my brain and I'm feeling as though my body is unhealthy and I'm getting winded walking up the stairs and I'm eating Chick-fil-A multiple times a week, I am not optimistic, nor uplifting, nor happy, nor confident at all. <laughs> like, at all. Like, how am I supposed to be positive about that? Okay, so to kind of section it off, I have decided for my own existence that body positivity and having a positive body image are two completely different things. And also, I don't see body acceptance and like body neutrality as being mutually exclusive things. Like you can have positive thoughts about yourself, you can have a really positive body image, but you can still want to change things about yourself. I can fully admit to myself that when I start treating my body like a human garbage disposal and I don't give a shit about my health and I'm not doing anything to better myself mentally, physically, emotionally, I am not positive. 
Like there's nothing positive about that. At the start of my YouTube career, that is when I gained the most significant chunk of weight mainly because I was so unwell and I didn't know how to handle that all these people were suddenly commenting on my life and me gaining that much weight came from a place of I am unwell. I am not doing good. So therefore I dealt with it by eating pizza and cake every breakfast, lunch and dinner with Ryan and Shane and everyone and that did not lead me to a good place. But the point is once I did start gaining weight, all of the comments were about that which you can take with a grain of salt and be like, you know, these people don't actually know me. These people don't actually know what's going on in my body and my life. But then you see the, like the other side, the people who are really nice and like putting out a positive effort and they're like, oh, pish posh. It doesn't matter that she's gained weight because she's happy and healthy and confident and thriving. And I'm here to tell you, I was not happy nor healthy nor confident nor thriving. I was straight miserable and probably insufferable to be around. The body posse was not flowing through my veins at that point. That being said, when I compare social media and how happy and posy everyone is online versus the real conversations that I have with r people in real life when you're talking to them face to face. It is a completely different stratosphere of conversation. Here's my issue because beauty is so unbelievably subjective. Like Trinity and I could walk into the same bar and look at the same guy and I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm ready to smash today, tonight, any time of the day. And Trinity would be like, repulse and now it's become this war of like different groups and it's like suddenly if you just happen to exist in a smaller frame you are offensive and you are not up to the times and you cannot sit with us and like you don't understand our struggles and like how much that we've gone through and then if you're a curvier person people are like oh my gosh you're obese and you're basically promoting death so like you're not doing well and also you're not doing well Everyone is at a battle with each other and it's like the whole movement to me feels as though we are trying to combat body shaming by body shaming. And how does that make any sense? Like, why are we assuming that the person over here hasn't had equally as many issues in a different way and equally as many struggles and equally as many harmful comments as the person over here? Like, why is person A battling person B when both people have been going through a shit time? I know I ramble a lot, so the thesis of that is at its core, the body positivity movement feels unbelievably negative to me. So now I want to shut up about society as a whole and I'm going to start talking about me because for some reason it brings me a lot of comfort when people can just be honest about where they're at. To just put it bluntly, I have struggled with how I have looked for my entire life. I remember being in third grade and looking at the girl next to me, like sitting at the desk and being like, oh my gosh, my leg is a little bit bigger than her. So what is the, what the fuck is wrong with me? It starts young. It starts before we even realize that it's starting. I remember in middle school not wanting to go to school because I was like, I am slightly bigger than everyone else. And I don't want them to see me. I don't want them to look at me. I don't want them to know I exist. When I was in high school, I was on the dance team and my senior year, I ended up quitting because I would look in the mirror and be like, I am a thousand times bigger than every single person on this team. And I simply cannot stand to come into this room every day and look at myself in the mirror because it's gonna, like, I'm gonna explode. So I quit because when I looked at myself in the mirror compared to the other girls on the team, I was like, I am literally 500 pounds. You can't convince me otherwise. I am quadruple the size of these people. So to kind of tie it all together, I'm gonna show you a picture of me in high school. This was my sophomore year and this is right before I started taking any form of birth control. And even when I looked like this, I was running a few miles a day because I was convinced that I was like nine times the size of everyone else in high school. I would love to call it my glory days, but there was really nothing glorious about it because I was very mentally unwell. And if you talk to anyone from my high school, they would probably tell you, yeah, Morgan was very mentally unwell. Then I started taking birth control that year. Fast forward to exactly a year later at the next homecoming where I had gained a significant amount of weight, which literally made me want to go for a walk on the freeway because I was so, so, so upset. And I couldn't figure out why I was gaining weight so fast. I didn't change my lifestyle really whatsoever. And you can look at, okay, here was me before I started taking birth control. And here is me a year after I started taking birth control. I didn't connect the dots until like this month, six years later. I have never once in my head thought, oh, Maybe it was the fact that I started taking a prescription that didn't sit well with my body that caused me to gain all that weight. Cut forward six years later, people on the internet are assholes and they're like, you need to lose weight, you need to lose weight, you need to lose weight, you fucking whore ass whale. You you look like Shamu at fucking the Sea World. You look like the damn moon. People will tell you anything. I've gotten trainers, I have had different nutritionists trying to figure out why the fuck do I have so much extra weight on my body that just will not go away no matter what I do. Look at the past six years. Half those years were spent trying to lose weight 
graduate and half of those years were like, fuck it, I, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna go to Chick-fil-A three times a day for all I care. There was really no point within that six years where I can tell you that I was like, happy and healthy and comfortable and positive and optimistic about like the frame that I was in. Core problem stays the same. Look at my closet, it's about to explode. I buy a million outfits because I'm like, oh, I want to be an outfit of the day Instagrammer. And then I take a photo of myself and I'm like, well, um, <laughs> oh. so then, you know, you feel this kind of outward pressure as like a content creator and influencer that you should be promoting body positivity, whatever. I'm like, what a sick joke if I came on here and I was like, I am the most body positive queen in the entire world. I love myself no matter what. I am happy that I go to bed at night knowing that I treat myself like shit. Like knowing how I feel on the inside and then also feeling like I should be the one that's giving you a message that's like, you should be a body positivity queen is a sick joke. When I sit down at the beginning of each month, I like to write out, you know, what do I want out of this month? First thing I write down is that I, would love nothing more than to be healthy emotionally, physically, and mentally. The thing about that is only I will know if I'm actually achieving that. And only I can analyze my actions throughout every single day to know if I'm getting closer and closer to where I want to be. I could literally go to Chick-fil-A, eat 2000 calories, and then go on Instagram and be like, I'm having the healthiest month of my life. And that is what a lot of fucking people do. You are the only person that will ever truly know 100% how you feel about yourself throughout the day, from every angle, from every point in your life. You are the only person who will ever know that. If I go and I eat 2000 calories of Chick-fil-A, but then I go on Instagram and I'm like, I am a healthy queen. And all these outside people are like, yes, she's a healthy queen. That is 100% just searching for an external validation that people know that I'm doing well versus how I actually feel about myself that's actually gonna solve my core issue of how I feel about myself. That's trying to portray an image versus trying to portray the reality. The whole broad conclusion to my whole rant is, I'm just gonna put it out there. Since I've stopped taking birth control, I would say I've lost a decent chunk of weight. And I'm like, coincidence? I think not. No, I'm not a fucking doctor, so I'm like, okay, Dr. Doolittle, I'll keep taking the birth control pill because you tell me that it's good for me, and you tell me that I need it, and you tell me that I'm probably a whore, so if I stop taking it, I'll probably get pregnant. Well, newsflash, I don't trust this bitch anymore because I stopped taking it. All of the extra weight that my body clinged onto for six years is gone. All of my acne is gone. My head and my mentality and like how I see the world is significantly clearer and it just makes me really pissed off. Just brings me to a place where I'm like, there are so many ups and downs. I would rather be like either body neutral or just have body acceptance but also be able to be real with myself and be real with where I'm at health-wise because I know when I'm not in a healthy place. I know when I treat my body like shit. I know when my internal organs are comparable to the waste basket at Chili's. Like I can tell. I will finish my bedtime chat with this. If you are struggling with your body image at all, that is okay. If you're struggling with your relationship with food, that is okay. If you gain weight, that's okay. If you lose weight, that's okay. You are a person that you look in the mirror and you're really fucking confused. Me too. From personal experience, I feel like it's so much more helpful to be in a place of accepting where you're at, but accepting also that it's okay to be in a place where you don't feel your best all the time because it's a normal human thing. We all go through fluctuations. We all go through ups and downs. We all go through, you know, different issues, different struggles, different insecurities, so many different stressors in life that cause us to do so many different things in so many different seasons of your life that wherever you're at is okay. But I think the best thing we can do is you know, accept where we're at and we'll find <laughs> eventually new shit to worry about and then that thing won't seem so big. I'm kidding, kind of. At this point, I think I'm still talking because I'm procrastinating because I really don't want to pack and I have to leave in the morning and it's like, that just seems like a whole mountain to climb having to get my shit together and unpack. But the point is, there is more to life than your body. 
there's so many more like positive things about people, like how you treat other people, how your mind works, what you're interested in, what your hobbies are, what you're brilliant at, what you can offer to this world, the lessons that you can teach other people and the lessons that you get taught by other people. Like there's so many positive things that why are we all so obsessed with commenting on everyone's body when that's like literally I know people say it all the time but it's like quite literally the least interesting thing about someone <sighs> why can't Oprah hire me as her assistant I feel like I could do a good job minus the fact that I'm a major procrastinator and I like am not very task oriented and sometimes I procrastinate way too much and also my room is a very disorganized mess but I just wanted to tell you about where I'm at and how I'm feeling and I also just wanted to like kind of put it out there that I I'm testing the waters of seeing how much I can share about like my personal health and wellness journey so if this is a complete like L and like you hated everything I just said like I'll take no and I won't do whatever again so let me know <laughs>